What up, Spooky Scott here. Um, I just wanted to create a quick little video kind of explaining what happened in that video um, because uh, this is the biggest question I get as an MD is like, how do you get the band back on track if they fall off the click? And so I kind of just want to talk step by step about what I do. Um, obviously you can't see what's happening in Ableton in that video, but I was able to like accurately recreate that moment in Ableton and I'm gonna put that like in the end of this video so you can kind of see what's happening um, from that side of things. Um, so, obviously uh, one of our singers got off track, which is fine, totally happens um, to singers and instrumentalists alike. Um, but as soon as I hear that she's off, the first thing I do is um, I start counting one, two, three, four, according to like the downbeat, what that's in Ableton um, because sometimes you know the singers can kind of like adjust and it'll fix itself um, but after like a couple bars I'm like you know what this will probably just be easier for me to just um, fix it over Ableton so in that moment I tell the band uh, follow her so I'm basically saying don't worry about Ableton I'll fix it just follow her lead and I'll get us back on track and um, they were immediately on top of it started following her like the pros that they are um, now, sometimes in those moments, I'll bring down tracks a little bit. We use a filter system, so I'll bring down tracks to about half filter to filter out any like tambourines or shakers. But in this moment in the song, there wasn't any percussive stuff happening. So I figured it was okay to just leave tracks in. Um, but the first thing I do is I go over to our tracks computer, which is to my left. Um, and on the keyboard, the computer keyboard, I press command seven. Now what that does is it switches Ableton's quantization from one bar to one eighth notes. And the reason you want to do that is because um, Ableton uses that quantization when you're looping. So typically it'll like, if you press previous locator, it'll loop back to the beginning of that section at the downbeat of the next measure. But if you switch it to one eighths, it's gonna loop in one eighth note increments. So that's how we're gonna get back on track. And the reason I use eighth notes is because um, I actually realized in this video that I could have pressed command eight, which switches it to one fourth notes um, because our our measures were, our click was only uh, quarter notes. So I could have pressed command eight to go to one fourth notes, but it's kind of just a habit. I've done this plenty of times. It's just a habit for me to press command seven um, because for like slower songs that are like 70 BPM or something, you have like um, a click, 70 BPM is like, obviously that's slow. So we have the eighth notes in there in the click as well. So it's like, so since we have that in the click, we don't know if our singer is off, like if her downbeat is on an eighth note or a fourth note. So that's why we switch it to eighth note increments, um, eighth note quantization. Um, so, press command seven. That's the first step, super easy. Um, and then at this point, I'm gonna start counting um, the bars in my head according to what the band is playing, not what's in Ableton, because it's not gonna line up, obviously. So I'm here in the band, I'm like, okay, this is their downbeat, one and two and three and four and. Um, and what I'm gonna do is, while I'm counting that in my head, I'm gonna look at Ableton. I'm looking at the play marker um, and if, I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to see if we're ahead of the beat or behind the beat. So like, if this is the play marker, it's going, and like there's like measures, you know, if these are lines for each measure. I wanna see if the band's downbeat, the one, uh, happens right before a measure or right after a measure. Because if you're before, then that means you're ahead of the beat, and you're gonna have to use the next locator button to snap it forward into place. But if your downbeat is just after each measure, then you're gonna have to hit the previous locator button to snap it backwards into place. So um, in that note, sorry, in that video, um, I'm looking and I see that we're a little bit behind the beat. So our downbeat, our one, was like on the second beat of each measure. So it's like one, one, two, that was our downbeat. So I'm gonna have to use the previous locator button to snap it back into place. Um, and quick note about previous locator and next locator buttons. I do have those mapped on my MIDI controller, 
but I also have them mapped on the computer keyboard to like, I think it's like comma is previous locator and period is next locator because they also have like the little arrows that go like back and forward. So that just made sense to me. Um, and in that moment, I'm gonna use the computer keyboard. I have that I have that mapped to the previous locator. I'm gonna use that to snap it back into place because sometimes um, like the MIDI controller can have some latency or something like that. I just like using that um, a little bit more. So you can't really see it in the video, but that's what I hit on the keyboard to snap it back into place. Um, so um, again, I'm counting one, two, and three, and four, and um, and I'm seeing that we're behind the measure. So what we're gonna do at that point is we're gonna have to wait to the next section because I have locators at each section in the song, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, so forth. Um, I think in that video, we're coming up on a course, so you need to switch it right at the beginning of that course um, because that's where the locator is. Um, so. I'm counting one and two and three and four and chorus is gonna come up. So let's say chorus and two and three and four and. So that snap is when you will hit previous locator button or forward locator if you're ahead of the beat, but I'm just gonna continue to say previous locator button. Um, you have to hit that button in between the end of four and then one of the next section, whatever you're singing. Because if you're before or after that, then it's gonna wait until the next like eighth note increment to loop and all this stuff, it's gonna get you off. So it's a really, really, really small window that you have to hit that button. Um, but if you do it with enough practice, you actually, it's, it's actually fairly easy. Um, so again, I'm counting one and two and three and four and chorus and two and three and four and click right there in that short amount of time. Um, and if you do it right, then it's gonna snap it back into place and then the band will be back on the downbeat um, with the tracks and everything. Um, if you don't get it the first time, then you might have to wait till the next section to like try again. Um, but I, I spent a lot of time at home kind of practicing this beforehand um, before I was confident enough to do this on stage and stuff. So uh, once you're back on the grid, uh, this is really important. You need to press command nine to set it back to one bar quantization. Um, otherwise it's gonna stay on eighth note quantization and if you're looping certain sections, it's gonna get weird. So. Press command nine to get back into one bar quantization and then um, bring in tracks if, if applicable. And then basically your band is back on track. Um, I'm trying to think if I missed anything. I don't think I did, I might've. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment or like text me if you have my number, I guess. Um, but yeah, again, I'll, I'll leave from Ableton's point of view at the end of this video. Um, just so you can kind of see what that looks like from that p perspective. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.